During the next 12 months, decisions made by this council regarding the proposed development west of town, as well as the Jackson property, will determine the future of our community. <coughs> really, that is absolutely true. The six people sitting here tonight are literally going to decide the shape of this community for 100 years in the next 12 months. That's going to happen. Um, given the important facing council and the significant opposition to the guidelines that they've been presented, I urge council to take all the time necessary, um, as uh, um, all the time necessary to my place to collect appropriate data and investigate options before making a decision that will have such a dramatic effect on the Salmon Arm. We realize that the current land use guidelines do not determine exactly how this site will ultimately be used. However, as one councillor said to me, uh, the guidelines should serve to encourage new direction. Unfortunately, the guidelines you're considering tonight encourage nothing new and reflects a very old, very unsustainable, and very damaging, even erroneous set of developments. As I'll de detail in a few minutes, there's new information available, a significant smart growth program underway, and a real opportunity for genuine community input to this critical decision. The land use proposal in front of you should be defeated, not amended, and sent back with instructions that it better reflect the emerging information on affordable housing, on leased land, public input on the issue that will emerge from the smart growth neighborhood meetings, as well as the last three public meetings that we've had. Um, further research by the Economic Development Society on affordable housing and input from people in the community tonight. So that's, that's basically where I'm, I'm, that's the position I'm taking up. But I first of all want to talk a little bit about the process, because I think this is very important for us to look at, for all of us to look at. Because over the past two years, this community has rallied three times to defeat what is essentially the same proposal. First encountered with the original Loblaws, 3,000 square foot big box in a big parking lot, which I think uh, Bernd uh, admirably illustrated. <laughs> there have been editorials, letters to the observer, person on the street interviews, a select committee report, and now three public hearings. <clears throat> While great interest has been shown in the property and a wide variety of suggestions offered for its best use, what all these hundreds, literally hundreds of comments, have in common was that virtually no one outside of the school district and their hired consultants have supported a 100,000 square foot big box store in a big parking lot. And yet providing for such, just such a catastrophe, catastrophe is exactly what the Development Services Department is recommending and the council has a proven principle. And while a comment was made that was entirely with how to make the site as marketable and commercially attractive as possible, there is very little consideration of community social costs of the kind uh, of the commonly commercial development they advocate, and Sean Patterson spoke to that earlier. In an attempt to establish a better understanding of Coriolis's position and perspective, we asked our own planning consultant, who has an MA planning as a city planner, to examine the comment on the um, and examine on the Coriolis report. And here are her comments. Now, it's going to be very brief because we couldn't afford to pay her, so this is very short. <laughs> I think the important thing to note is what Coriolis was paid to do. It appears that they were engaged strictly to look at the land use plan developed by the select changes needed to be made to secure the best financial return for the school board and then recommend development guidelines accordingly. Fair enough. From the city perspective, this is not, her italics, her emphasis, good planning by any measure, smart growth or otherwise. We understand municipalities have limited resources to detailed analyses on every site. But this site is different for two reasons. It is already public property. So by its nature, it should be used to max public benefit and not terms. Second, secondly, developers have already expressed interest in shaping this piece of property so that it might indicate there are other potential proposals out there. They might not be able or want to build something as fast or this immediate financial return. So, but if we're looking 15 or even 30 years the road, what benefits will this site be giving to the wider arm? That's a very significant question. So the process of examining how the Jackson site can best serve, complement, and benefit the people of Salmon Arm has essentially been hijacked by an outside consulting firm. Input from hundreds of Salmon Arm residents over two years has virtually been ignored. 
This is not the way to encourage engagement or develop a sense of ownership of council's final decision. It empowers citizens, they are cynical and less willing to participate in community consultation in the future. Now, I have heard from three councillors privately and in independent conversations that what we really want is people to get involved. We need the whole community to get involved. Well, they're here tonight, but it's not because they're being listened to. It's because they really feel a need to express themselves. And, and that's why they're engaged. That's why they care. And these are the people who really do shape this community. And I worked in international development for 15 years. I worked in Africa, mainly in the whole area of community development. And, uh, and reduction of poverty. And the first principle we start from is start with the community. Don't tell the community what they need. Don't solve the problem for them. Get them to find not just their, their deficits, but also their assets. Because what that does is but give them a sense of community. Mr. Sawyer, could you keep this admission to the relevant, to the yeah, matter that happened? Yeah, it's it's no, it is. It's totally relevant. No, I'm sorry. It's well, not. I think involving the community is really relevant. Yes, it is very relevant. I'm sorry, you don't? Oh, I agree. Oh, okay. 100%. All right. Anyway, let's move on. So let's present a proposed land use guideline alternative. As mentioned, the current proposal is an old development document. It does not reflect current and emerging concepts of good community planning. For example, the remarkable work on affordable housing carried out by Adam Cheka and Trinity Roy under the auspices of the Salmon Arm Economic Development Society, who reported to you earlier today. That report will not only show that home uh, development on lease land is feasible and fully supported by CMHC, by the way, it may be the most practical way to ensure affordable housing, since the uh, land assembly costs are, are negligible. Their proposal for medium to high density housing on the Jackson site would draw new residents into the downtown core, providing sustainable commercial growth and new vigor to the community while alleviating one of the major blocks to economic development in the community, which is a lack of affordable housing. The importance of keeping public space public and making it a focal point of community activity. Use of a larger portion of the Jackson site as a public square or park would not only beautify the community, but provide more opportunities for community interaction and a draw to residents and visitors alike. This is precisely the principle recognized and financially supported by the province's Spirit Square initiative. Money is out there, as a number of people have pointed out. Um, I don't necessarily favor a complete park, well, that may turn out to be the best solution. But, but I do think it, it's essential that we, we maintain this public space public. And lastly, the importance of moving away from car-based developments with too much parking towards more sustainable, smaller-scale commercial stores with better bus, pedestrian, and bicycle access, access. A perfect opportunity for a pedestrian underpass under the TransCanada to finally link the two halves of our city. This site, with new input from the Affordable Housing Committee, soon to become the Society, the Salmon Arm Smart Growth Program, and real community input could become a model for small city development. 